Hey everyone, this is Paul from Orthoe Valpal. Today I want to talk to you about what a cyclops lesion in the knee is. Um, and I think it's important that you kind of understand what the cyclops is and how it affects patients, you know, after they've had an ACL reconstruction. This happens most often with people who have had ACL reconstructions. Um, and what happens is we notice this lack of ability to extend the knee. So you can see there's some space underneath the knee. It doesn't extend quite as well as this one does, okay? You can also see that there's still some kind of chronic swelling inside the knee. So, it, you know, intra-articular effusion inside. So we're five months out now after having had an ACL reconstruction, still having difficulty to extend the knee. There is pain with extension of the knee and that pain sits kind of right here in the anterolateral part of the knee. It feels like it's deep in that area um, and it's more restricted by this than by anything else. Um, and as a result of this lesion, it causes continued swelling inside the knee. When you have swelling here, it shuts this quad down, doesn't function as well. So not only do we have this lack of ability to straighten out the leg, but we lose a little bit of performance and strength because of this chronic swelling and that inability to straighten it out. So what is a, um, a cyclops lesion? Well, if we take this tibia, we'll imagine that it's kind of like this right here and we pull it up a little bit. Here is that ACL, okay? And that ACL needs to be able to move like this. As we straighten the leg out, it becomes tight and it needs to be able to hold really snug there, okay? It's called a screw home mechanism. But imagine if this ACL was shorter or if something restricted it from straightening out. So kind of like this, we'll simulate what a cyclops lesion would look like. Okay, so it's this buildup of fibrous tissue that is on the front of the ACL, most oftentimes on the front and on the outside a little bit. And therefore, when we try to straighten out the leg, that hits that fibrous tissue and it, can, it can become painful. It can cause some crackling and some snapping in there, and that's a you know that's happened with us, right? And so we're not able to fully straighten it out, and therefore that's painful. So no matter how much we work on straightening, which we did right from day one, work on straightening, 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 work on the quad set, try to get it to go straight, it keeps wanting to bounce back, okay? So one of the tests for a cyclops lesion is just the bounce test. By taking the knee, you push down, and as you'll notice here, it pops right back up, okay? So this knee, we push it down, it stays down, here we bounce up and she's stretched out because I've been pushing down on her a little bit, but generally when she comes back in, this knee is back up here and we walk with this slightly flexed knee, okay? So as much as we've worked on trying to extend her, it keeps coming back. So she's lined up um, to have surgery tomorrow and have that debrided and taken, you know, take that cyclops lesion out of there. It's going to let this swelling settle down and therefore we're going to have a better quad contraction. We're going to have better extension, no more bounce back, and we should really be able to progress her a lot faster and get her back into her running, jumping, uh, and cutting activities. So functionally doing fairly well now, but this is really going to push her ahead a lot faster. So I hope that you have a better understanding of what a cyclops lesion in the knee is and um, I hope you enjoyed and, uh, and uh, like our video today. Please be sure to subscribe. Thanks.